So this was obviously a very dominant performance with two 10-8 rounds. Would you, was that perhaps all you could have hoped for aside from a finish? Man, I was always going for the finish. I usually get those pretty decisive rounds when dudes want to lay there on their back and just kind of let me beat on them. Like, I was surprised he didn't try to, uh, you know, get away. He just wanted to lock me down and hope that the ref would stand us up. And, you know, in the end, I was able to do enough work that he couldn't get up and the ref didn't stand us up with him just whining and laying on his back. So, you know, uh, I expected and hoped for the finish, but I'll take it. If somebody wants to lay there, let me drop elbows on him, beat him up. I'll take it. And looking back, is there anything you think you could have done maybe a little bit differently to get that finish? Because yeah. He's a, he's a tough guy to finish. Oh, well. dude, extremely tough. Uh, I would have liked to stand up more. I know I hit him with some of those right hands early on. I don't think he expected me to throw any punches, but I hit him with two or three right hands. Just kind of look for the shot, but I could feel him kind of zap a little strength when they come wrap around his ear and get him. So I would have liked to stand up a little bit more. And you're going to see more of that in the next fight. I was a little under the weather for this one, especially when I started cutting the weight. I started getting sick again, which is a terrifying feeling. But at the end of the day, I would like to uh, work more stand-up, look for the finish, and then get a little more aggressive with my uh, ground and pound and try to finish him with some elbows and strikes there. But like you said, Kamozi's a tough dude. I don't want to gas myself out just going going for the elbows, going for the finish early on. A couple of uh, wins for now, Europe. <sighs> I like Europe. Yeah. I'm going to have the coaches like, man, I don't want to come back here. I'm getting too tired. You can't do this to me. But uh, no, I love Europe. Dude, I love seeing the people. That was my, my biggest compliment about coming here is, oh my God, I love seeing the different people, the different body language, what they eat, how they interact. So I love Europe. We've got quite a few events coming up here. Okay, Glasgow, Rotterdam, Gdansk. Uh, Anything in particular? What are you saying? Where should I go? Yeah, yeah. Where do I need to visit next? That should be the question. Well, everyone loves Rotterdam. Rotterdam. Good fans out there. They're going to yell, give me some shit, drink a pint afterwards. Probably. All right. We'll have to see about Rotterdam. What's the date? <laughs> well, I'll look in there. I'll take your recommendation, see what I can do about it. Fair enough. Well, look, you know, you, we spoke about this earlier on in the week, you know, Chris Camozzi, you know, six years your junior, but he's got twice the amount of, the amount of pro fights and he's going to start this career a little bit later. Mm -hmm. But where do you currently think you are right now in the career? In what? Where do you currently think you are in terms of your career progression? So Damn. Considering you started late, you know? I'm in my infancy. I, w I really wasted some of the early years just being a big, strong, tough guy where, dude, my first, I got into strike force, I think, on my third or fourth fight. So I've been here for almost my entire career in strike force in UFC. And I went in there just being a dude that lifted weights. I was a mud off the street with a little wrestling background that lifted weights and liked to go out there and try to punch people. So I'm just getting down with Trevor Lally and their camp down there in Arizona. And instead of just being a thug, I'm starting to learn the technique. I'm starting to get out of the weight room and get into the MMA gym and learn a little bit more. So I think I'm in my infancy as far as my game goes and my progression where you're going to see me another year, two years, even next fight. Are there any advantages in this bug style that you see might have helped you because it might give you a different, different movement or something like that? Yeah, I mean, the, the biggest thing in the thug style is just having heart, dude. Going out there feeling like shit, like, no, you ain't going to get away. No, I'm going to get that takedown. I ain't going to give up. That's that's my strongest thing. I know my strength and whatever little athletic, you know, advantages I have. It's my, I don't want to give up. I don't care if I feel like crap. You're going to get your ass beat, and I'm going to be a hard dude to put away. You mentioned that you saw Chris Mosby fight on the same card as your few climbers. Yeah, you know, I heard him. You thought, you know, your cars might cross. Is there anybody else there out in the, in the, in the roster that you Man, might fight or you've seen? I got to start doing more research, but I, I got to literally, I'm, I need to start watching more fights, but there's a ton of dudes out there. I told them downstairs, like, I'm going to have to take to Twitter. I'm going to do more research because I like to call people out. I, I think Chris is actually one of the dudes I like most on the roster. So when you go fight a guy that you really like, it's not nearly as fun as when you get on top of somebody you can't stand and you want to slice them up and you want to beat them bad. So Chris is a great guy. I always see him at these other events. I, you know, I have nothing but respect for him. I know he's a tough guy. I'm glad I was able to come in here and get a big, uh, a major win, especially on an edge like that. With well, that being said, the top of your head, is there anyone that you know, does get under your skin? God damn, under my skin. Now I'm pretty damn easy going, but I'm gonna change it up a little bit. I'm gonna bristle up and find somebody that's, that's talking shit that I can get after a little bit. Chris, uh, Chris Mosley uh, has been known to have good grappling, but people said that his grappling was underrated because he was fighting guys like Jacques Carré. Yep. What's your comment regarding that now? I uh, no, I don't think I think he could have shown more tonight. I think he was content to lay on his back and hope that the referees would stop us up. I wish he would have tried to show more offense, try to do more things, because that would have opened up for me from the top to land elbows, to look for submissions, instead of just trying to, you know, get my arm free and get rid of the underhook that he was trying to clamp down onto. You got jujitsu start to throw it, you know? What would be your, your dream fight next? <laughs> my dream fight? Dude, I'm gonna fight this whole flight home so I get home and hug my baby boy 
And then, like I said, I have to take the Twitter. I haven't been on my Twitter forever, but I have to start socializing with fans. I'm sure people are gonna, oh, what you grinding about in this and talking shit and saying great job, way to whip his ass. But I need to start getting in there. I want to interact more with the fans. And like you said, I want to watch more fights and see who, who the major assholes are out there. They're talking shit and deserve to get beat up.